Happy Wednesday morning to you, Cross Point Alliance Church, and anyone else who's dialing in. Um, hope that you're having a good day, resting in Jesus and resting in his authority to ask you to do what he wants you to do. And I trust that you, like me, uh, endeavor to say yes to whatever that might be. Just a couple of things before we jump into today's update. But uh, yeah, again, Good Friday service coming, Riverside Alliance, this will be from six to eight, six to seven is the service, seven to eight is the communion and the meal. You don't have to stay the entire time, but uh, we will be doing a meal together with the uh, folks from other churches. And uh, so uh, it'll be catered in, so don't have to worry about it, anyone who's wondering. And also we will not have adult Sunday school class this coming Sunday because we're gonna celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So. We will uh, see you 10:15, uh, not 10:30 because we're already started at 10:30. So we'll see you at 10:15. Gotcha. All right. So today is called Spy Wednesday or Great Wednesday or Holy Wednesday. <clears throat> so, what happened today? Uh, a couple of thousand years ago during Holy Week. Well, today is the day that we believe that Judas turned a corner and began to seek, actively seek for a way to betray his master. So you remember two Sundays ago, we were in Mark chapter 14, and the beginning of that chapter reads, it was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so I had mentioned to us that Sunday morning that either it's Tuesday or it's Wednesday, because in their way of counting, any part of a day counted as the day. So like, for instance, Jesus would, would be uh, crucified and in three days would rise again. He was crucified on Friday, buried that day and stayed in the tomb on Saturday and early Monday mor or Sunday morning, he was up. So three days, even though there was just partial segments of those days, so it may well be that Mark chapter 14 is actually referring to Wednesday. So um, it, I'm gonna read a short passage here. So in chapter 14, verse 10 and 11, it says, Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. Talking about Jesus. And when they heard it, that is the chief priests, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. So he's now seeking for the right time to betray Jesus. Now, remember, the chief priests and the rulers had plotted, but we got to take this guy out. We can't do it this week, though, because there's all these people in Jerusalem and there'll be an uprising. And so we got to figure out kind of how to navigate this one. Judas came to them and said, hey, look, um, I'd like to like to, to hand, get him get him over to you. Uh, it was perfect for them. They were like, fantastic, great. Now we got an insider who's going to work for us. So just a couple of things first and by way of context. Before this, before Mark tells the story of Judas turning a corner, remember we looked at the Mary at Bethany, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who anointed Jesus' feet with a year's worth of wages. Uh, an amazing act of extravagant love and worship. So while she did that, a woman, one of the insiders, Judas, criticized her for doing that. Mark or uh, John chapter 12 says how Judas was a spokesperson in criticizing Mary. So in Mark's account, right after that, where she dumped a year's worth of wages, on anointing Jesus, and Jesus affirmed that. Then Judas, the insider, goes to betray him for 30 shekels of sil silver. It doesn't say that here, but I haven't been able to clearly get a bead on how much 30 shekels of silver was. I've read three months, I've read four months, I've read $600, so I'm not quite sure, but what I do know is that 30 shekels of silver far, falls far short of a year's worth of wages. So while she spent a year's worth of wages on anointing her Lord, 
Judas is securing X amount of money for betraying his Lord. And it's called Spy Wednesday because he puts on, he takes on the role of a spy. He begins to, uh, begins to plot and to scheme against Jesus. So just <clears throat> tomorrow's going to get really interesting uh, on Thursday, which would be the, the Last Supper. But already things are closing in on Jesus from a human perspective. But we know that the Lord is arranging things. But how sad that Judas, who's been with him for three years, is unable to connect in his heart with what Jesus is teaching. And not only is not able to connect in his heart with Jesus, but has actually gone so far on the other end as to actively look out ways to betray him. We could get lost in the weeds trying to figure out, like, why would he do that? Which we do wonder, like, why? How? How could this happen? It did happen, and it can happen. And people do things, like Vladimir Putin right now, like, why? But he does. Evil is real. Uh, but Judas is doing something that he betrayed the Son of Man, Jesus. And... <clears throat> So I don't know that I have too many takeaways for us, but I do want us to think about this one thing, that the walls were closing in on Jesus. He saw it happening. He saw what was coming. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter. And even though the insider was working against him, he didn't strike out at Judas. He didn't lash out in anger didn't bemoan his fate, didn't cry out, victim, oh no, uh, to his father, but he accepted the, the scheming that was going on around him, even when his close friend, I think it'd be fair to say that Judas would be considered a friend of Jesus, but even when his friend was working against him, he continued to trust the father and to allow himself to be led to the place of suffering, which had been appointed ahead of time for him. It's a beautiful picture. It's a sobering picture. Uh, and it gets more sobering. Tomorrow's going to be extremely sobering. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, Friday. Um, but I see and I have a new appreciation for the way Jesus is handling this and the way he's submitting to his Father. But, uh, yeah, Spy Wednesday, Great Wednesday. So if you're feeling these updates and these things get a little more dark, it's because they are. We're getting closer to the day. But boy, I tell you what, Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. So I'm looking forward to that. But let me bless you, Cross Point. We'll connect with you tomorrow, okay? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. See you at Cross Point.